Hello and welcome to the first ever online orientation for the International Foundation Year at Queen Mary University of London. So I'm Mark Holloway, uh, the Programme Convener, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you to Queen Mary. Usually I'd be giving this talk to a live audience on campus and I would start by congratulating you on finding the classroom, which is always a major challenge when you first arrive. And then for the first 20 minutes of my talk, we would be interrupted by the late students who weren't quite so successful at finding the room. I know many of you will be sad that we can't teach on campus this semester. And this is something that disappoints me and my colleagues too, because we love teaching and teaching in person actually takes up far less time and energy than teaching online. But uh, even if online delivery is not something any of us wished for, it does give us some opportunities. And I'll be trying to make sure that we all take advantage of those opportunities and that we make your experience as foundation students at Queen Mary as positive and as rewarding uh, as it can be. With an online welcome talk, you will get to attend when it suits you and without the interruptions of students arriving late or even students from other programs who have somehow attended the wrong welcome talk, which always happens, there's always at least one. Um, when I give a welcome talk in person, it's great to see everyone present and to put faces to names, but we always have a lot to get through in a short space of time. And that's not necessarily the best way for you to receive the information about your studies that you need. The online orientation that we have put together this year is designed to be interactive. I'm a great believer in learning by doing, and you're going to learn about the foundation year and how you will succeed on the foundation year by completing online tasks. And we're going to get a clear sense of what you've understood and anything that you haven't by seeing how you complete these tasks online. You'll be completing them um, in your own time. Um, and not through live teaching sessions um, so you can relax and enjoy it I hope but also um, the interactive uh, task will bring you together and we'll start to see the development of our community so that's me starting on a positive note this is the first or online orientation ever uh, it's going to be the best orientation ever now, the purpose of this particular video is to give you an overview of the International Foundation Year. Uh, there are separate videos and associate tasks, associated tasks about specific pathways and for students taking the Foundation Year as part of a BSc within the schools of Economics and Finance or Business and Management. In those videos, you'll learn about your module choices and what you need to do in order to progress to the next stage of your education. And within the online orientation, you'll also find guidelines on how to use essential technology uh, on the foundation year and how to communicate appropriately within your new university um, community. And I'll give you advice on how to make sure that this year is a successful one for you. There's also advice from former students and information from the teaching team about their subjects and what you can expect to learn on the range of modules available to you. In this video, I'll give you a little bit uh, of information about Queen Mary and the aims of the programme. I'll also talk briefly, briefly about pathways, progression and your timetable. And then you'll get more details on these later on in the orientation. But you have to work for it. You have to pay attention. Uh, you have to follow the instructions and complete the tasks that we have set. So uh, this is this is me. Actually, this is me about five years ago, uh, where I somehow had less hair uh, and yet more hair, but just like more up there. Um, so as I've said, my name is Mark Holloway. I'm the convener of the International Foundation Year. Uh, when I'm on campus, you can find me in Bancroft Building, uh, room 124. Um, any room number that you see on campus, the first 
number will be an indication of the floor that the room is on. So Bancroft Building 124 uh, is up on the first floor. Um, if you need to contact me, it's always best to use my uh, personal email address first, or rather my Queen Mary personal email address first, which is m.holloway at qmul.ac.uk. I don't really recommend following me on Twitter um, at Mark G Holloway unless you're particularly interested in um, West Bromwich Albion Football Club and uh, following my uh, growing or ever growing dislike of Aston Villa and Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, we've got an um, we've got Twitter accounts and an Instagram account for the foundation year which is uh, at QMULIFE. So if you're on Twitter or Instagram, I really uh, recommend following those. And if you'd like to get involved in some kind of social media work experience yourself, uh, usually I ask students to run the um, Instagram account. So if anyone would like to volunteer to do that, let me know. And I will trust you with the login details and um, it will be up to you to to post pictures uh, documenting our year together. Now, um, at this stage uh, in the on-campus welcome talk, I'd ask you to introduce yourselves to each other, um, which obviously I can't do right now. But actually, I've already made this request in the Flipgrid task that I sent you on Monday the 7th of September. I'm recording this talk on Thursday the 10th, and although we've had some great responses, we've only received 16. And that includes two videos from teaching staff. So if you haven't already done so, please follow the link um, in QM Plus to, to the Flipgrid, Flipgrid task, easy for me to say, and make a short video to tell everyone your name, where you're from, and where you'll be completing this online orientation. Um, I look forward to seeing your responses. And I think you will look forward to seeing each other's responses as well. So, welcome formally to Queen Mary University of London. Uh, this is a photograph of East London looking towards Central London and uh, the skyscrapers that you see. I mean, the closest we've got to skyscrapers um, towards the back of the picture. That's the financial, the traditional financial district. That's the City of London. Um, you can see the shard at the top left hand corner of the picture, so uh, that's around London Bridge to give you a sense of where we are in relation to uh, the river. And in the foreground of the picture, uh, which is, oh, sorry, which is uh, maybe clearer to see here, in the foreground of the picture, the, the green space at the bottom of the screen, that's Mile End Park. We see Mile End Park is separated from our campus by a canal. That canal takes you up to Victoria Park and then beyond to Camden and Regent's Park. Um, and in the foreground you see the Mile End campus, which is where uh, all foundation year delivery typically takes place and, and pretty much all undergraduate delivery as well. Um, the kind of, uh, you might, in, in the kind of middle and to the left of, of the image, you can see um, two kind of blue tower blocks, and uh, that's actually part of our Whitechapel campus um, where we uh, teach um, medicine um, and where there's a, a hospital. But the majority of what we do, particular undergraduate level, uh, takes place here in Mile End. It's known as Mile End uh, because it is one mile from the city of London. Um, now, I was actually a Queen Mary student last century and the campus didn't really exist. It was just a, a, a few buildings along Mile End Road. So in the part, most of the building on campus is new. The student, the student village, uh, which includes student accommodation and shops, has all been built within the last 20 years and most of it within the last five to 10 years. Uh, so we've got a mix of modern, modern buildings and uh, older buildings, uh, such as the, the Queen's building that you can see here in this picture. 
I just want to explain as a by way of orienting you to uh, your place within Queen Mary University of London, just to explain that the university is divided into three faculties. Um, we have medicine and dentistry, science and engineering, and you and we are all currently in the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences. So when this foundation year began, it was called the International Foundation Programme for Humanities and Social Sciences. And what we do on our programme covers everything that is offered within that faculty. So just to give you a sense, there's quite a spread of subjects within Humanities and Social Sciences. I've organised these uh, when I was a student here, I, I, I was a member of the School of English and Drama, uh, which I would consider to be art subjects. Um, I see uh, the, the opposite end of the spectrum, perhaps, is economics and finance, which are social sciences. And at Queen Mary, economics is quite um, mathematical. It's quite numbers based. You can do a BA economics at other universities, which is perhaps more discursive and more about um, more political in some ways and more about macroeconomics. Uh, but economics here is is um, it's quite scientific and quite numbers based. Um, between economics and uh, English and drama, we have the School of Language, Linguistics and Film. Now, you may be given that some of you are, are heading to the School of Law, the School of Business Management, and Economics and Finance, Politics and International Relations. You may be surprised when you log into MISIS to see that your home school for this year uh, is the School of Language, Linguistics and Film. And that's just because this is the home of the foundation year. So the foundation year uh, serves the whole of the faculty and we have uh, teaching staff from a range of different schools within the faculty, uh, but we are based within the School of Language, Linguistics and Film. So I work in what we refer to as SLLF. Um, we also have the School of History, School of Politics and International Relations, School of Law, School of Geography, which offers both human geography and uh, physical geography, but what we do on uh, the foundation year is human geography. Uh, then we have the, the very large and growing uh, School of Business Management. Um, if you stay at Queen Mary right through until your graduation, um, you should see in your time here the, the building of a new School of Business and, and Management building um, next to the canal, which is going to be a really impressive building. Um, and that is our faculty the range of schools and subjects uh, that are involved in this program. Um, we also have uh, a pathway actually to global health and global health is a really interesting subject because it's somewhere between humanities and sciences. It, it sits within the School of Medicine and Dentistry but because of the nature of the subject um, it's possible to progress to a degree in global health from uh, our foundation year by taking a combination of humanities and social sciences subjects. I probably should have said that within the School of Language, Linguistics and Film, instead of talking about myself, I should have, uh, I should have mentioned that within Language, Linguistics and Film we actually have a number of departments. So obviously film and linguistics, uh, but we also have a BA in Modern Languages uh, where we teach um, a variety of different languages and cultures. And there's also comparative literature. So I studied English literature at, at Queen Mary in the School of English and Drama, but it's also possible to, to do comparative literature where you look at the literatures of, of different um, languages and, and, and cultures as part of your degree. Okay. So, uh, w what's the point of a foundation year? So the aim of uh, our foundation year is, on a, on in very simple terms, it provides you with a route to a degree programme at Queen Mary um, or at other UK universities, if, if that is what you prefer. And that's the basic programme 
aim of any foundation course that you'll find across the UK, which there are many. Um, but we pride ourselves at Queen Mary in the rigour and academic quality of what we do at foundation level. Uh, we are much, much more than the kind of uh, simple language course that, that you'll get, particularly with um, private companies operating in, in, in the UK and at UK universities. Uh, and we're giving you a, a really authentic university experience. You are Queen Mary students from day one with um, access to exactly the same resources as everyone else at the university. Um, and you will be taught uh, solely by Queen Mary staff and in a style that matches um, what you can expect as, as undergraduates. Um, so our aim is not just to give you a route to a degree programme, um, but also to give you a, a, a really thorough preparation for the next three years of your education. Um, and through the foundation year, you, you will develop and demonstrate subject knowledge, linguistic competence and study skills required, not just for entry to year one of a degree programme, but for success on that degree programme. And what we see every year is that our former students invariably uh, graduate with um, good honours. So they all graduate with a first class degree or, a, or an upper second class degree. Um, and feedback we get from former students is that they feel um, that they have an advantage over their peers in the first year of their degree programmes not only because they know how the university works and physically they might know their way around, but um, they have the skills that are required for success at university, which are simply not taught um, at school, either in the UK or anywhere else. And always important, I think, in my welcome talk is to emphasise that your foundation year is a transition. Um, I've mentioned that the, the style of, of teaching and learning on our program is, is uh, similar to, to what you can expect um, in your future degree programs. But we are taking you on a journey. We, the, the reason that you're on a foundation year is because for one reason or another, you're not quite ready for the, the, the kind of degree that you want to be doing either because you've gone through a 12-year education system and you simply haven't had a chance to take a qualification that would be accepted for direct entry onto a degree pro program, or because you haven't quite got the grades that you needed uh, to get onto a degree program that, that would satisfy you, your ambitions and, and, and your needs. So uh, it's really important for us to think about this year as a journey that, or a bridge that takes you from where you are now to where you need to be as a successful undergraduate uh, next year. So there's quite a lot of support and skills development, particularly in the first semester. But by the end of uh, the, the program, you're going to be uh, operating quite independently and effectively, hopefully quite efficiently as a, as a, as a university student. Now, if you, if you feel a little bit scared when I say this is a, like a difficult academic course, and don't be, uh, because uh, we're going to challenge you, but we're also going to support you. So we'll, we'll, we'll push you, but we'll also be there to catch you if you fall and to kind of help uh, give you a push along the, the way. Um, you'll get plenty of support as long as you um, tell us when you're having difficulties, follow instructions when we give them and importantly follow advice and be open to feedback you'll do well and you'll make the most out of this transition so i'm going to say a little bit about pathways and progression on the program there are much more detailed well there are more specific videos elsewhere in the orientation about the specific pathways um, but just to um, clarify um, each pathway that we offer uh, has a separate talk with details of that pathway and the elective subjects that are available to you. Um, 
progression from your pathway onto your destination degree is not guaranteed. You you need to earn it, and I think you you'll appreciate that that's fair, and that should be what you want because next year you want to be on a degree program with other strong, serious students who are going to help you to make the most of your university experience. Okay. Um, so we expect whether you, whether we're teaching on campus or online. We expect engagement with with our teaching, and you must uh, attendance of all live teaching sessions is compulsory. There aren't that many when when it's online, um, but we do monitor your attendance and engagement. And eighty percent engagement is an absolute absolute minimum. I should point out that in a typical year, like sixty five to eighty percent of students progress from the foundation program to a, a Queen Mary degree or to another first choice degree. So unbelievably, some students would rather study at another university after this year than, than Queen Mary. Um, obviously, we at Queen Mary, well, we don't offer every subject that you might want to study. So that's absolutely fine. And in the last couple of years, uh, I can think of students who've gone off to uh, really good other universities to study subjects like criminology and um, performing arts, uh, ar um, architecture, things that we don't offer at, at, at Queen Mary. And it's great that we can, you know, we will support progression to other uh, universities in that way. Um, but as you will see, not, not everyone gets what they want out of this programme. And it's typically the students who don't achieve the grades that they need to progress uh, I, I can usually tell you who they are within the first couple of weeks okay? because um, students who don't engage, students who don't attend, students who uh, don't uh, follow instructions, um, students who, who miss deadlines, don't do work, don't, um, don't participate in classes, typically those students will not do well. So just make sure that you're not one of those students. Um, if we're 22 minutes into the orientation video, and if you are still paying attention now, then you're probably not one of those students. Um, I should say that last year was a, actually a particularly, although, although we were really disrupted by COVID-19 and uh, lockdown in the UK, um, I think the university did everything it could to make sure that students weren't unfairly disadvantaged. And we actually saw um, really good progression, both to Queen Mary and to other universities and actually it was well over 80 percent of students were able to progress either to a Queen Mary degree or elsewhere. We had other students going to Warwick, UCL and King's. I don't know why anyone ever wants to go to King's. I mean it's, it's, Queen's are always um, better than, than, than King's. Anyone who studied history can tell you that. Um, but yeah we were really pleased to see how many students were successful on the course last year how many of them are starting degrees at Queen Mary um, this September. Okay. Um, now, you, sorry, to go back. Uh, progression depends on you achieving the grades required for progression to the next stage. So we have to assess you. Um, Actually, on the foundation year, there's, there's actually quite a lot of assessment, more assessment that you'd get on a regular degree program. Um, but that's actually because we don't want to give you lots of pressure at the end of the year. We don't want to put your, your future in a kind of all or nothing exam. And we know that students respond well, actually, to if, if we give you a task and say this is assessed, you're going to get a grade for this and it counts. We know that will motivate you to... Um, put effort into that task and try to do it on time and so actually it's all part of the process of uh, learning to be a good student and developing good study skills uh, and good academic skills um, that we assess you a lot. In semester one we kind of assess you little and often so we're, we might give you a lot of small tasks to do but they all kind of together um, uh, count for a lot of marks but every module that you do is assessed. Every module that you do has pretty much equal weight. We assess you through written assignments. Um, in semester one we set you essays 
um, up to about 1500 words in length. In semester two, you would do 2000 word essays um, and at least one 3000 word essay. Well, only one 3000 word essay, but it's, that's quite a lot. It's more than you would do um, on, on most uh, first year undergraduate programs. Uh, we give you, we, we grade you actually on participation, so um, we don't use assessment as a punishment, we use assessment as a, a way to reward you for good, for being a good student, so if you attend classes and, and participate, you'll see that reflected in, in your grades. Uh, we ask you to give presentations, including group presentations. Um, we do a lot of portfolio-based assessment. And uh, we really like portfolio assessment because it means that you can gather up lots of small pieces of work and put them together into one um, online portfolio, which we're going to tell you about in another part of the orientation. You submit that and you get a grade for like the whole thing rather than getting grades for every little thing that you do. Portfolios really um, enable us to reward you for the work that you do, uh, even more than the quality of it. So. If you're starting this um, year thinking, oh, my English isn't great, and all these other students on the, on the, on the course have got great English, well, we're not going to grade you on the quality of your English in, in December, which is only three months away. But we will give you grades on um, how, how much work you put into completing the task that we set and doing that, that well, and how you respond to the feedback you get. Uh, there are traditional forms of assessment on this program as well, so uh, most modules carry at least one class test per semester, and um, there are no exams for semester one modules, but um, in some, at the end of semester two, you will all do take at least two exams. Most, um, most modules have some form of exam um, in the exam period at the end of the, the year, and in order to pass a module, you must pass the exam um, for that module, um, even though the, the weighting of each exam is only about 40% of the marks. Okay. Um, we always ask you later in the semester um, questions about your, we ask you to evaluate your experience. One of the questions we ask you is whether um, we made marking criteria clear to you in advance. So in every module we will show you how we're going to mark your work and actually there's a student handbook that you can access via QM plus I'll highlight that um, um, in, in different ways throughout the year uh, but within the student handbook there is a, a clear set of marking criteria that we use so please when you're filling in a form in the future and it asks you whether or not you've seen the marking criteria if you say no it's your fault not ours okay um, I want to say a little bit about the, the provisional timetable and, and provisional is a really important word here because uh, we like to keep our options open, we like to keep your options open so that we can be flexible with you in the first few weeks and respond to your needs, whether that's in relation to the subjects you want to study um, or uh, in relation to maybe different time zones that, that you're in. Uh, we also need, might need to make adjustments for teacher availability as well, particularly in these times when um, most staff will be working from home. Quite a few of us have um, other responsibilities at home. You might be parents, um, you might be uh, caring for, for um, other members of, of, of our family. So uh, it's an unusual time and we need to be flexible to try to keep everybody happy. So what I'm going to tell you now is, is all kind of provisional. But um, for sure, in each module that you take, you're going to take four modules each semester. So we've got two semesters. Each semester there's four modules uh, and for each module that you take there will be weekly online lecture content for you to work through in your own time. So you're going to have to manage your time a little bit there but we will help you with that. So that's no lecture will be delivered live. The lecture content um, will, will be made available to you at the start of each week. 
there will be readings and or videos. Um, so read text that you have to read each week, uh, videos that we ask you to watch, maybe a combination of those. And then at least one live webinar, so at least one live teaching session per group um, per week. So each module uh, will have a certain number of um, students enrolled on it. Um, if we if we take um, business as an example, business is usually our most popular uh, module. If we have 60 students taking business, we'll divide them into four groups of 15. We'll, we'll divide them to try to get a good balance of nationalities, um, gender, uh, background in some ways. Uh, we'll also try to take your time zones into consideration if you're not in the UK. Um, and then each group would have a, a one hour uh, live session each week with the, the, the module uh, leader and, and teacher, Deborah. Um, subject like um, film, where we tend to get fewer students, uh, there probably won't be enough students for more than one group. So the, all, all students taking film typically just have uh, one group session a week. Um, as well as uh, group sessions, we will give you one-to-one -one tutorials um, according to your needs. So it will be up to you to book tutorials and to use what we call office hours. Office hours are the times that um, teachers are available to talk to students and they don't have any other commitments. So some teachers will publish, I'm available for consultation at this, this time of the week. Uh, but then you have to um, book time or, or communicate with the, 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 the teacher uh, to see them for their office hour. And um, you will all have one-to-one uh, -one tutorials with your academic advisor um, at least once a fortnight. So you can expect um, at least four tutorials with your academic advisor um, each semester. Um, on QM Plus, there will be a page for each module that you take and we are going to use weekly checklists so that you'll be able to see very easily um, what you uh, need to do that week and you can feel great satisfaction as you, as you tick the tasks off. Um, this is the timetable, the provisional timetable as it stands now. I appreciate that you might need to zoom in a little bit to, uh, to, to, to read this, but the document will be available on QM Plus for you to see. Um, as I said, everything is provisional, um, but what you can see here is pretty much the, the scheduled teaching times for all of our subjects. And... Um, where you see, for example, here you can see business and management webinar one, two, three, and four on a Tuesday. If you're taking business and management, uh, you will only attend one of those sessions, but you'll find out soon which group you've been allocated so you know which time uh, to tune in. Um, so it's possible that some of these times will, will change, the days might change a little bit, um, but we will communicate with you about that. Um, and even consult you on it too. Okay. Again, there, there are other places where this information will be made available, um, so it will always be on QM+. Uh, you can also find it on the university website, but these are the term dates for this academic year. Um, teaching starts on Monday the 21st of September, um, and the last day of this term is Friday the 11th of December. Uh, we have what's called a, a, a study week um, in the week after that, beginning on my birthday, the 14th of December, but there's no teaching scheduled after the 11th of December. You will have some deadlines and some work to complete, most likely in the week after the 11th of December, but you won't have any classes. And you won't have any live classes in uh, the week from Monday the 2nd to Friday the 6th of November. The week 7 each semester at Queen Mary is reading week. And that's a week in which you have a bit more time 
to either catch up on work, catch up on your reading, or get ahead with some reading. Um, by reading week each semester, you'll you'll have an idea of which assignments you need to do. So that's sort of always a, a valuable time to um, work on assignments. Um, if you are looking to make, I know it's a very difficult uh, circumstances in which to plan uh, travel, but if you are planning to travel um, at any point uh, that might affect your, your studies, please, please don't. Uh, please don't travel or take holidays during teaching times, um, but you are free to travel during reading week. You don't need to be um, a contactable line. So similar pattern in semester two, we've got a 12-week semester. Week seven is reading week in March uh, and we break for our uh, Easter holiday on Friday the 16th of April. Uh, there's an exam period uh, which is Thursday the 6th of May, there's a word missing there, Thursday the 6th of May to Friday the 4th of June next year. And I've just included in here, um, just to just to, to emphasise really that you can't take anything for granted. We have a reset exam period every August and that's because there are students every year who do fail this programme and there are students who miss exams for good reasons. So, uh, sometimes students are sick in May and can't complete I exams um, and if that happens then all we can do is offer you the opportunity to take the exam again in August. So uh, hopefully you won't need reset exams in August but um, you should be aware for, your, for any future plans that uh, you may need to take exams in that period. Thank you very much for your attention. That's the end of the first uh, stage of the orientation, really. That's my welcome talk over. Uh, I've got a follow-up task for you to complete on QM+, so please do that now. Um, and if you haven't already done so, remember to record an introduction to yourself uh, uh, via the Flipgrid task that I sent round on Monday the 7th of September. Okay. If you're still with me, thank you very much for your uh, attention. If you've got any questions, please complete the rest of the orientation task because they are, are all designed to answer the kind of questions that you'll, you'll typically have at this uh, stage of the year. Um, but if, um, if you do have any, any questions at the end of orientation, you know, there are, there are forums that you can post your questions to and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, thank you very much.